Hi, I'm Ji Wonu from Sanggyungban University. In this video, I'm going to talk about D2FQ, Device Direct Bear Queuing for NVMe SSDs. This is the joint work with my colleague Kyusan Minu and my advisor Jingyu. Modern high performance SSDs can deliver a million IO operation per second. This huge increase in the bandwidth and capacity of SSDs enable to service IO requests from multiple tenants on a single storage device. Naturally, fair sharing of the SSD bandwidth is important to meet the service level agreements of applications. Many fair share IO schedulers are implemented at the block layer of the operating system. However, a problem of IO scheduling in the block layer is that it induces high CPU overhead. Since modern high performance SSDs are shifting the bottleneck from IO to CPU, reducing the CPU overhead associated with block IO scheduling is important. Offloading the IO scheduling function to a device is an attractive approach to saving CPU cycles. Many researchers have proposed to conduct IO scheduling inside an SSD. And the standard NVMe protocol has the IO scheduling feature called NVMe Weighted Round Robin Queue Arbitration, or WRR. It provides three priority class of IO command queue, each with a configurable weight, and applies the Weighted Round Robin IO request scheduling by the SSD firmware. However, fair queuing cannot be easily implemented with NVMe WRR for the following reasons. First, IO handling frequency is the only adjustable parameter. Second, it does not consider the size of IO request. Lastly, it supports only three priority class, whereas the number of tenants can be higher. Consequently, it is necessary to bridge the gap between the requirements of fair queuing and the simple yet uncertain performance characteristic of NVMe WRR. We propose G2FQ, which is a low CPU overhead fair queuing IO scheduler built on top of NVMe WRR. Like other fair queuing IO schedulers, G2FQ is virtual time based. It keeps track of the virtual time of each flow and tries to equalize the virtual time of all active flow in a system. Conventional fair share IO schedulers do this by taking three steps in the IO scheduling layer. Summit, stage, and dispatch. However, in D2FQ, once application submit an IO request, it is directly dispatched to an SSD. As a result, D2FQ performs minimal operation in the block layer, so it saves CPU cycles. To achieve fairness, we need to equalize the virtual time of flows. Hence, some flow need to boost so they can catch up others and some flow need to slow down to allow other to catch up. DTFQ manages the global virtual time or GVT, which is the minimum virtual time among active flows. Then it throttle flows whose virtual time is far ahead of GVT. Throttling is done not by the block layer of the IO stack, but by exploiting NVMe WRR feature. DTFQ abstracts three classes of queue in NVMe WRR as queues with three different IO processing speed, fast, moderate, and slow. Then whenever a flow submit an IO request, our scheduling policy immediately select a queue of the desired speed and dispatch the request to the queue. As a result, slow flow in virtual time are enforced to use the fast queue to catch up others and fast flows are throttled by using the slow or moderate queues. With this basic idea, DTFQ needs to address following challenges. First, how to obtain sufficient IO processing speech difference from NVMe WRR. Second, which flow should be selected for IO throttling. Finally, how to manage GBG scalably. For the first issue, we introduced dynamic HL ratio adjustment. For the second, we carefully set the threshold value for Q class selection policy. For the last, we introduce a sloppy minimum tracking method. Due to the time limitation, I'm going to talk about the dynamic HL ratio adjustment only. 
In the dynamic HL ratio adjustment, we define the term HL ratio as the ratio of the weight of high Qs of that of low Qs. It represents the ideal maximum speed difference the high and low Q can produce when the IO size is fixed. For example, HL ratio of 4 means that the slow Qs are 4 times slower than the fast Qs. Thus, it is the most important factor to achieve fairness. Since the HL ratio represents the ability to regulate virtual time progression, small HL ratio may fail to meet fairness requirements due to its insufficient IO throttling capability. When the HL ratio is high, it can give sufficient IO throttling to any combine of flows, so the IO performance can be satisfied. However, it has the side effect of increasing the tail latency of IO requests. This happens because too high HL ratio gives high IO performance penalty, which can be more than necessary. This indicates that we need to set a proper HL ratio dynamically with any combination of flow, IO size, and so forth. To do so, GTAPQ collects information of virtual time of all flows and their IO uses statistics and use the collected information to find the proper HL ratio periodically as follows. First, GTAPQ detects HL ratio need to be increased when fairness is not satisfied. We introduce another threshold, GW, to detect unfairness. When the virtual time of a flow crosses the threshold, GW, GTAPQ detects unfairness and then it calculates the additional IO throttling capability to resolve the unfairness. It calculates the delta of virtual time increase of two IO flows, one with the maximum virtual time and the other with the minimum virtual time. Then the formula delta Vt max over delta Vt mean is the ratio of widening virtual time gap between the two flows, causing the unfairness under the previous HL ratio. So by multiplying the ratio to the previous HL ratio, we can have a new HL ratio to resolve the unfairness. We increase the new HL ratio by one to make sure the slowest flow can catch up the fastest one. To prevent unnecessarily high tail latency, GTAP could try to decrease HL ratio when fairness is satisfied. In this case, GTAP could calculate the virtual slowdown of each flow which represents a required throttling capability of the system for a flow to satisfy fairness. The virtual slowdown is calculated by dividing the estimated bandwidth of a flow without any throttling, where using high Q only, by actual bandwidth of a flow. Then the next HL ratio becomes the maximum of the virtual slowdown among all active flows. Now let's see the performance evaluation of GTAPQ. This table shows our experimental configurations. We implemented GTAPQ in the Linux kernel. We used Samsung GSSD, which supports NVMe WRR. We compared GTAPQ with BFQ, which is the fair share IO scheduler in Linux, and MQFQ, which is the state of the art scalable fair queuing IO scheduler for multi queue SSDs. We built a synthetic workload using FIO benchmark and a realistic workload using the YCSB benchmark with LoxDB. This figure shows the bandwidth allocation of four IO flows with different weights, 8, 6, 4, and 2. If the fairness is satisfied, the bandwidth ratio should be identical to the ratio of weights. As you can see, all the three fair share schedulers fairly distribute IO bandwidth to the four flows. However, only GTFQ and MCAPQ utilize the full device bandwidth. When we see the CPU uses, GTFQ reduced CPU utilization by 45% as compared to MCAPQ. This is because GTFQ performs minimal operation in the IO scheduling layer. To test the effect of our dynamic HL ratio adjustment, we built a synthetic workload that changed the number of flows dynamically. The workload begins with one flow, then at 10 seconds, three flows begin. At 20 seconds, another four flow begins. The flows have different weights, one or three. We run the workload with the three HL ratio configuration. 
static 3, static 128, and dynamic. First, bandwidth fairness. Static 128 and dynamic achieve the target bandwidth ratio 1 to 3 because their HL ratio are high enough to satisfy the fairness. Static 3 failed to achieve the bandwidth fairness. The figure below shows how HL ratio changes over time in our scam. HL ratio is set to 7 when event 1 begins and 17 to 18 when event 2 begins. This graph shows the tail latency of event flow from 10 to 20 seconds and 20 to 30 seconds. Static 128 shows long tail latency because the HL ratio of 128 is too high and flow using the slow queues experience long IO delays. However, Dynamic shows low tail latency while providing fair bandwidth distribution in both events. The performance of IO scheduler is also important when the storage device is not saturated. For this evaluation, we run a single thread FIO performing 8 kilobytes random read with varying its IO depths from 1 to 16. The figure to the left shows IO latency and bandwidth, and the figure to the right shows CPU utilization. MQFQ shows the lowest performance in terms of the three metrics due to its CPU overhead. DTFQ and NON show similar performance trends since their IO scheduling operation in the block layer are minimum. The summit equal dispatch characteristic of DTFQ can enable other block layer bypassing scam to have IO scheduling capability. In this experiment, we built another scam, LLDTFQ. The asynchronous IO stack combined with DTFQ. As you can see in the figures, LLDTFQ outperforms the other in terms of IO latency, IO bandwidth, and CPU utilization. Let me conclude this talk. We present DTFQ, a low overhead, high performance, fair queuing IO scheduler. DTFQ is carefully designed to implement the sophisticated fair queuing IO scheduler on top of simple device side IO scheduling feature, thereby saving CPU cycles and improving IO performance. DTFQ can also vitalize block layer bypassing scam so they can have the fair queuing IO scheduling capability. Thank you for watching this presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.